Podcast. He's a uh, journalist, writer and TV presenter. Uh, thank you very much for talking to us. First, can we just get your initial reaction to what you're hearing out of London? Well, it doesn't come as a surprise. The bottom line is it's impossible to download the thinking of people who have terror in their heads. And that's the problem. We lived with this for years and years, 30 years in Northern Ireland. And despite all the resources and the reserves and the presence of the armies on the street here, the British Army on the street, the IRA and loyalists have continued to bomb almost at will. It's virtually impossible to stop people if they're determined to plant bombs, shoot, etc. One man with a gun. I recall very uh, visibly the, the day that uh, the Brighton bombing, the morning the Brighton bombing happened, uh, a senior Republican said that day, we've only got to be lucky once. And uh, that's it. Uh, the reality is we cannot download the thinking of people who are determined to use bombs and bullets. And we can put as many police officers and soldiers on the streets, but where you have an open society, a democratic system, there is a capacity for this over and over again. This city, for example, at this moment in time, is wide open. Anybody could drive into this city in Belfast, where I am at the moment, and plant a bomb or literally attack people in the street. We live in a democracy. That's the nature of life in a democracy. You cannot, you cannot prevent these things. You can do your best, but at the end of the day, one man, even one person with a gun, can do a lot of damage. And the peace process in Northern Ireland was brought about when the two sides sat around the table and started negotiating. That's not likely to happen in this circumstance, is it? There are huge fundamental differences why, why, why here. Why do you say that? Why, why, do you, why do you say that? I, I don't buy that at all. I think that's, that's sort of nonsense, propaganda that's put about. You take it from me. Somebody currently is trying to talk to ISIS, ISIS, and it's, it's the only solution. Somebody will have to talk to those people. And I, I, I shock people I know when I see it. I, I've been saying it for years, the Americans and the British are talking to the Taliban. Oh, we're not talking. But the more they deny, the more you can be certain that they are. I proved incontrovertibly here in 1993 that the British government were secretly talking to the IRA. I got the incontrovertible evidence that they were talking. And then we had a Secretary of State for Northern Ireland tendering his resignation when he was totally exposed and proven to have been misleading the House of Commons and indeed the Prime Minister himself was. Now, that's the reality. People will be talking to ISIS and there's no alternative to conversation and dialogue. No matter what the attitude is, no matter what government is saying, they have to find a way to bring this violence to an end. That's the reality. That's the challenge for all governments and it will happen. Let's try and bring it back to the UK election and the, the general election taking place on Thursday. Uh, what impact do you think this latest attack is likely to have on the, uh, the narrative in the run-up to that vote? Well, logically, logically, it should be to the advantage of the sitting prime minister. But it doesn't always work out that. But I see the latest opinion poll giving the Conservatives 12 points of a lead over Labour. I don't know how that's going to work out in reality, but that's the way it is at the moment. I see that this talk now this morning of uh, canvassing being suspended uh, against the backdrop of these attacks in London. So what do you do? Like, I mean, you say, are you going to postpone the election? I think that would be ludicrous, and that would be a, a major concession to those who, uh, who are engaging in this violence. I think you must allow democracy to continue and to obtain. You just cannot lie down uh, under the threat of, the, of this. But we want to be mindful about this. When, when the attacks were taking place in Germany and France and Belgium, there was a bit of sort of uh, gloating in, in, our, in our system about the the weaknesses and the flaws and the deficits and the defaults in, in, the, in the European security system. But look where we are today. We've had Manchester, we've had the attack at Westminster recently, and now we, we had atta an attack on London Bridge, and now we have this attack here. We cannot be complacent about our security. It, it, it's an absurdity to be boastful about our security. In an open democracy, the reality is anybody one person with a gun can do an awful lot of damage. Why do you think the number of uh, attacks, I suppose, slipping through the net in the last couple of months has increased? Because 
it's impossible to know the movements and the thinking of these people. You may think and you may boast that you know about the movements of these people and the thinking of these people. The reality is we witnessed it here in Northern Ireland. The police always gave the impression and the authorities and the government that they were on top of things and they were in control. Sorry, in an open society like ours, it's virtually impossible. You can't be in lockdown day and night. You can't corral people. You can't pen people in specific areas day and night. Democracy and life has to go on. And where you have huge volumes of populations and people, it's impossible to have absolute security. That's the bottom line. And sadly, if people don't engage ISIS or the people behind these bombings, we'll have a lot more of this. This isn't going to stop. It's quite evident now. It's been escalated very dramatically, we can say, see now, across Europe. And that's not an accident. You see what's going on. The, uh, the, there's an attempt to drive these people out of Mosul and supporters of these people. And, and as a result of that, they're flexing their muscle further west. And I think that's what we've got to expect now. And, we, you know, when, when we looked at the situation after Manchester, the level of security was elevated, escalated, to critical. Within days, it was back down to severe. Are we going to back, go back up to critical tomorrow? What's the relevance of this, you know? Has any, anything changed? I'm not so sure anything has changed. The threat hangs over us. It's like a Damocles sword, and it's probably going to be with us for a considerable time. We lived through that Northern Ireland. We, we have experienced this uh, down the years in Northern Ireland. Thank God we have lived through a political miracle in Northern Ireland. Why? Because brave people on the Turk to engage in dialogue and conversation at so many levels and found a way through this to bring the violence to an end. Amy Mali, fascinating to talk to you. Thank you.